Now, I tell you why I was in Africa in a minute, because uh, what we actually do is we crowdsource data on public transport. And in many regions all around the world, there's lots of public transport, very different from the public transport that we have here in Berlin, the VBB kind of public transport. Uh, yet it's there. Uh, Daladalas in uh, Dar es Salaam, jeepneys in Jakarta, minibuses in Istanbul or in Mexico City. So all of you that have been traveling around the world to more kind of emerging regions, you have encountered these sorts of transportation. Yet in these cities, uh, there are no apps like Ali, like Quixit, like Movil, um, like the BVG app, because there is no digitalized data on public transport. So this is the kind of framework that I wanted to bring you in to understand what, uh, what I'll be talking about. Uh, if you want to Twitter a bit about what I'm saying, you know, supporting or, you know, adding some spicy controversy to my uh, hypothesis, feel free to do so. Um, and as I said, we believe that we will be shifting from a static system to a demand-based responsive public transport. So what does that mean? Uh, if we look out today, we see the buses going statically. You know, the same route, the same line, the same direction, at the same time, very statically. It has been like this for, me, for more than 100 years, just that 100 years ago, uh, hey guys, can you be, be a bit more silent over there? Thank you. Um, just 100 years ago, it wasn't a, a bus with a climate system in there, it was, a, it was a horse carriage. But systematically, it was the same, going statically from A to B, from bus stop to bus stop. But we think that in the coming decade, in the next 10 years, we will see that public transport in cities will shift to a demand-based, to a responsive system, going where the demand is. So today we have a supply-based system. The bus is there, take it or leave it. In the future, in the next coming years, we will see a demand-based system. But, um, and this is actually our mission, building this operating system for a responsive demand-based public transport. But you need data for that. You need for that kind of a software, for that kind of an operating system that tells the buses where you should be picked up and where you should be kicked out you need data, and in 80% of the cities worldwide, we have no or incomplete data on public transport. So I'm not talking about Berlin, I'm not talking about Munich, I'm talking about Cairo, I'm talking about Mexico City, Jakarta, Manila, Buenos Aires, and so on and so on. So it's a huge part of the world is not having access to digitalized ways of public transport. This was our first thing, and... Uh, we tackled it with building a software where we can crowdsource this information with local communities. So we built this kind of GPS tracking app that gives us geolocations, points of interest, routes, stop lines. It basically works like this. You have this app, you can download it, you jump on a bus and we can see via GPS where you're going. When you stop at a bus stop, you hit the bu stop button and we know there's a bus stop. And this way we basically crowdsource the information on public transport in cities where we don't have digital data on that. Now, we did a big kind of turn around Africa. We, we started in Latin America, we did lots of stuff also in Southeast Asia, but we didn't understand Africa. This August, we started our um, first crowdsourcing project in Africa, in Dar es Salaam. It's the seventh largest city in Africa. Uh, it's the fastest growing city in Africa too. And and now you'll see, it starts in 2008, kind of on a time map, how the digitalization of the map evolved. And the map does not only include kind of um, the houses and the streets, but also what's going on in between, so what's bringing you from A to B. We jumped in in 2015, and I think you will see uh, what I'll be talking about in a second. So let's see if that works. Hello? There we go. So you see the first kind of major routes are being tracked, the first major lines of Dar es Salaam. There's a university campus up there that was being tracked in 2013. Still, we're not there. Uh, and here we jump in. So this is August 2015, where we completely mapped the city within two and a half weeks with the help of our crowdsourcing app and with the help of local communities. 
It was really, really was a huge thing for us to see how quickly we could do that in Africa. The communities were very, very active. We cooperated with a local university, with the World Bank, with American Red Cross, and we could really see how it took off in Dar es Salaam. And now I want to show you how we crowdsourced the Dala Dalas, the main public transport mode in Dar es Salaam. And it looks a little bit like Pac-Man, yeah, if you see this. Um, and this is actually day one, seeing how people jumped on the different Dala Dalas going all around Dar es Salaam, and we could see, you know, where they're going, which routes, we could see patterns and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, you can see how viral that went within just, just a few hours. So after that, we had the complete information of the supply of public transport. We knew what is A, what is B, so we knew the, um, the map, it was digital. We could bring you from the hospital to the school because we knew the geo-coordinates of these two things. And we knew what was going in between the school and the hospital and how you could get there. So obviously, step two was then building an app that was providing you or that is providing you public transport in Dar es Salaam. This is the same thing uh, in Mexico City. Mexico City uh, was very tough, 20 million people living there. And the minibuses in Mexico City make up 60% of the public transport. So in Mexico City, we needed some more time. It wasn't done in two and a half weeks. We needed six weeks for that. But again, as I said, after this crowdsourcing, we have the complete supply of public transport in a city in our platform. Well, now it becomes interesting. You want to know of the demand. You want to see how supply and demand matches. And this way, we then built an app one second, here we go. This is Ali, an urban mobility app. Some of you might know, again, Move It, Movil, Quixit, it's kind of all the same concept. For us, it's a means to an end. We want to understand the demand. We want to understand how people move from A to B with different modes of transport and with the availability on site. So, of course, here in Berlin, Ali has different modes of transport, you know, car sharing, drive now, car to go, uh, all the BVG bus transport, and so on and so on. In, uh, in Mexico City, it has the mini buses, it has different kind of bike sharing, it has the communal buses. So it's a very adaptive approach, always showing what's available, what you have in the city. Now, with this, we can then understand how people move from A to B. We understand the demand side. And now, let me bring you to a very nice case that uh, we specifically did for you today. We call it the Berlin Tegel Insights case. So understanding how demand and supply match. So the black things are the direct bus lines that you see in the city. That's the direct supply that we have. Um, these things show you how long you need to get to the city. And here, this is the interesting part. Here you see where the demand is. Yeah? And we have enough usage in the city that it's statistically safe to show does the demand match the supply. Now, this actually is the first basis to go to an on-demand, responsive public transport because you have to know and you have to be able to uh, pre-sense and to pre-calculate where demand will be during the course of the day, during the course of the week. And based on that, you can then apply um, a public transport service that's on demand and that's much more responsive than today's. So thank you for your time. Oh yeah, I also got some awards. So thank you for, some for your time. I hope you got an, an understanding of how our model works. We crowdsource information on the map and on the public transport in the city to basically, you know, like a vacuum cleaner, we go over the city and suck up all that information. We then provide an app to people so that we understand the demand side and can optimize demand and supply. And this is a very nice example, I think, how mobile technology within the last years made it possible for us to really disrupt the way how urban mobility will work in the future. So thank you so much for your attention.